Hey, Proto. Hey, DM. Welcome. Hey, Orbal. So my throat's still still feeling it today, but I wanted to get through Riven, so <laughs> streaming tonight. I did get out my laptop and I hooked up my TTS uh, optical image recognition OCR thing to see if that would work with any of the text in Riven, and no, it does not. <laughs> so unfortunately, I have to I have to speak. All of the uh, the journals that we come across, so hopefully we're we're maybe done with the uh, the the super long journal entries. Maybe hopefully, like <sighs> for a game based around so much FMV and acting and all that, the fact that there isn't like an option to have voice acting for the journals is a little annoying. <laughs> it's a little annoying. Oh boy. If you're yeah, they probably will. So, uh, God. So I went through this afternoon and I took some screenshots of like important stuff. Um, and then I actually fired up my, my, my Lama Lana screenshot taking script that I, I made just for Lama Lana. <laughs> So now I can I can grab screenshots while we're actually playing now and won't have to like keep referring back and like backtracking in the game to go back to some something that I saw. So now I can hopefully speed up the process here a little bit um, and then and then worked a little bit on my notes to to see if there's anything that I missed. And I guess there were sure. Hey, Dark Gucci. Yeah, we got the technology like. It's it's totally feasible and plausible that somebody playing this in 1998 would have like a Polaroid camera, let's say, and they just put that thing up against the TV and sh get their get their picture, wave around the the film a little bit, and then they they too will have their screenshots. So we're essentially doing that except with technology. Um, and I guess 1998. They might have also had like an early like floppy disk based digital camera too, um, like a Mavica or something, um, <laughs> as their their screenshot taker. Um, yeah, photos of CRTs. Yeah, it, especially with like with film cameras, uh, Polaroids. I don't I don't think you could do anything with like shutter speed on Polaroids. Um, as far as I'm aware, Polaroids are just like put film in, hit button, and then wave it. And then that's the full extent of what you can do with Polaroids. I think I'm not a photoologist, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I, I don't think you could actually do that many things with it to, to make a Polaroid of a CRT actually look good. Um, huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. I can already tell <laughs> it's going to be real a bad time tonight with my throat. Uh. <clears throat> it are Gucci. What is this? I'm out of Rasu. This, this doesn't seem like a game song. <laughs> sure. How that ended up in OC Remix, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Alright. 
But in, in better news, my health insurance crap got sorted out. Um, it actually got sorted out this morning, but then I still had to... I still had to... to take some calls this afternoon about it of like yeah it's it's all done everything's good and they'd ask me about four separate times of is it actually good just to double and triple quadruple check you know and, and and the annoying part is now is that i i had to push back a doctor's appointment that i had in early january because i i thought i wouldn't have insurance by then and now i do and, and now i push back this appointment that i i kind of wanted to keep now um, to talk to him about my throat, <laughs> that's, that's now not gonna happen until February or something, so... Ugh, shit, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Hey, Hidden. Um... So, at least, at least that's sorted out. It could be worse. I could be getting the runaround with, um, with the health insurance people again, so... Luckily, that, for now, appears to be sorted out, at least. So, great. And then took the took the bike out with the new windshield on it. Um, the windshield did not fall off my first time going on the freeway with it, which is a good sign, considering I installed everything myself and I'm not I'm not super mechanically inclined. But it appears I put everything on there correctly. Um, I didn't put Loctite on the bolts though, and that might be a problem. I think I might have to take it off and put Loctite on it, <laughs> especially since it's mounted on the um, uh, the front handlebar. So probably a good idea to put Loctite on it. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, my dad's going to be over this weekend anyways, and we're doing... We have to take apart the, the front supports for it anyways this morning. Or this weekend. Do I have a GoPro? No. I was looking at getting a Insta360 X3, I think is the latest model for it. Um, if I go on long rides. Uh, the problem is, though, uh, I wouldn't put red Loctite on, on motorcycle stuff. Blue Loctite is enough, and red Loctite, you need, like, a blowtorch to take those off, so, I'm, <laughs> I, I bought some blue Loctite. I have some, I just haven't applied it to the bolts yet. Um, so the, the problem with GoPros is that, uh, if you wear a GoPro on your helmet, um, in California, that's actually grounds for you to get pulled over and get ticketed. Because you're not supposed to have anything mounted to your helmet, um, like, sticking off to the sides. You can have an intercom, because that goes on, like, the, the inner shell and, like, on the bottom of it. But you can't actually have a GoPro off to the side or on the chin or anything like that. So that leaves mounting it on the handlebars. And the problem with doing that on my particular bike is that... Um, if you put any sort of irregular weights, um, okay, well, I'm not doing that either with Loctite, so. <laughs> um, the other problem is if you put any irregular weight on the handlebars, um, you, the bike is prone to having a, ta a tank slapper at high speeds, which you don't ever want to have a tank slapper at all, but having one at high speeds is not great. So what a tank slapper is, is when you're, you're steady like this, and then all of a sudden, the handlebars start shaking like this. And it's when they start hitting the tank is what makes it a tank slapper. And when it's doing this at, <laughs> at 90 miles an hour on the freeway, that's a real bad time. That's, that's how you end up getting into an accident like 95% of the time. Um, so the, the front of my particular bike is not meant to go over um, like 80-ish 80, 80 miles an hour. It's actually electronically limited to 100. Um, and people have found out the hard way that they have like mounts for their phones on the front handlebar. Um, that just having a phone in a mount on the left side of the handlebar near the left grip is enough to, to make it start to do that. <laughs> so... I need to, I'm just not going to mount any sort of camera on there. The other place I could put a camera is, um, uh, getting like a suction cup mount to mount on the tank. Um, yeah, it's, it's a real big nope. Like there, there are other options. Like you can get a, a magnetic tank bag and mount it to that. Um, but 
realistically no real great options. Now that I have a windshield, I guess I can mount it to the windshield somehow um, with like strong double-sided adhesive or something. But but yeah, that that kind of discounted the the idea of having like a GoPro. It is a good idea to have a GoPro. Yeah, have a chest cam. Cause like if I'm doing a long enough ride that I would need a camera or something, I could just have a backpack and then just have it mounted on the shoulder of a backpack. Cause that's, that's legal. You could do that. Um, so. Yeah, Honda has a, um, uh, a limiter for a hundred. Um, the, well, so the, the automatic version of the bike, which is the one that I have, is limited to 100. The manual version, where you actually have a shifter and a clutch on it, that one's limited to 110, I think. <laughs> so, um, an F-150, yeah. Well, I can, I can accelerate pretty quick in that thing. That's the difference between me and an F-150, is like when I was riding it today, the second that light turns green, I just... I just go like that and I'm fucking gone on this thing. <laughs> so even though it's it's technically a cruiser bike, this thing could actually go pretty well. Um, I could probably keep up with electric cars in that thing. Um, so man, I'm just I'm just having a blast on that thing. And I don't miss having to shift at all. Like I know like all the, the internet talk about the, the automatic bike that I have is like, oh man, shifting is such an integral part of the motorcycle experience. I can't get a bike without a shifter. I don't miss shifting at all. I'm just having fun. It's great. I love it. I, I'm totally okay with this this automatic future. Um, like, it's one thing to have to shift in cars and, and needing all that, but it's, uh, it's just, it's a ton of fun on that thing. I can't wait. <laughs> Though it kind of also defeats the purpose of me wanting, I wanted to get a special gas powered bike before eventually getting an electric bike um, in the future when electric bikes actually become more feasible than they currently are. Um, so it's it's kind of a bummer that I am i didn't get a bike that I could actually shift with if I wanted to. Uh, technically you can manually shift in the one that I have, it's just buttons that you press on the left, um, the left handlebar, but I don't know. It's, it's a lot of fun. I've really missed motorcycling. I've wanted a bike for so long, like over a decade and finally getting one. It's great. Um, and the weather is finally nice, so I can actually enjoy it now, unlike before. Um, so it's it's been pretty great. Pretty great lately. All right, let me get the game all sorted here. And then we will get into Riven shortly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so. Riven, the sequel to Miss PlayStation 98. This is Peace Explosion number 224 or 223. Don't worry about it. Uh, part three, six hours, three minutes and 14 saves, zero deaths. I'm pretty sure you can't die in this. Um, usually for the most part in games like this, there's almost no danger of, of dying to anything other than boredom, which Riven's been quite the game so far. Um, as far as progress so far, which let's hop into this real quick. Uh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Snowy and slippery. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's about 60 degrees now, 60 Fahrenheit, which I don't know, that's like 15 Celsius lately. And, and at night, it gets down to around freezing. But during the day, it's actually pretty nice. Um, and it will pretty much stay like that for until spring, essentially. Um, okay, so. Riven. Progress from yesterday. Uh, we are on disc one. I, I kind of backtracked back to disc one to see if there was anything new that I could do and kind of know is the answer to that. Um, so, uh, between last time and this time, uh, I took some notes and, and took some screenshots of stuff that we, we've come across. So, 
There is a um, an area in disc four, I believe, that I believe I need to be able to like befriend the fish thing, which here's a statue of it inside the, I guess the temple. And I took a screenshot of this because there's probably some significance to this, this red stuff down here. Um, Cause the bowl there, there's two statues. They both look very similar and both of them have these red things like off to the side of, of the bowls that are tipped over. So I think maybe this is supposed to tell the player that like these weird test fish things are either attracted to or unattracted to objects or lights of the color red, maybe is what this trying to tell us. Um, let's see in, this was in disc three. There is this spinny underground thing that I think was a generator maybe, um, and I noticed when I was watching the VOD of it, uh, one of these symbols was gold colored in, uh, and it would take about, I don't know, three seconds or so for it to, to do a full rotation. I don't know if I ever tried clicking on that when it got in front of me, but that's, that's something to take another look at. And it also appears to have symbols on it that I believe those are, uh, colors. So these, I have some of these written down um, of what the game, I think, has taught me what some of the colors look like. And where that taught me was back in the Peepo area. So this part here. So there's this with a bunch of symbols on it. And then if you did that, you hit that button and then that lights up teal slash blue. This one's green. So that's circle dot in the middle. Um, circle dot in the middle and then lines uh, or arcs above and below it is yellow and then this one's probably gold which is a line across and so that kind of matches up with with this maybe um either that or like whatever whatever symbol this is which i suppose is like that I guess is is that symbol i don't know um i don't know <laughs> i'm not sure what what the point of this uh that room is um i also took screenshots of all the drawings that i saw in all of the journals um this one just tells us how the geothermal stuff works i guess um this is the so the thing on the left is the hologram projector um the diagram on the right, though, I'm not sure what that exactly means. Like, maybe that's how the projector works in on the inside of it, maybe? Not sure about how all that. Um, this was the five, or no, six colors that was mentioned in the, the journal. So that's, that's what I wrote down in my notes section. Um, this was apparently describing one of the laboratories that the the dude has somewhere um i don't really recognize that really from anywhere i still think that this um thing on the left is the big gold dome that i've seen in some other parts of the game but i was never able to get up and close to it yet so i'm not sure if that's the case uh this thing um we did kind of have a use for this right here um, but I'm not sure if I solved that puzzle correctly or not. So that remains to be seen. Um, this here, so there's a coded access system into all the domes. So after taking a look at this with the five symbols on it, so my thought for this as we hop back into the game here my thought is those are likely numbers for that probably usually the the symbols that look like that have been numbers in most cases um so i think that that is five numbers in a in a sequence there and I have seen a thing right here 
that is five boxes in a row of things that you can press in. So right down here. So the problem is the symbols on the coded the coded access system here. I don't think I have figured out exactly which ones correspond to which numbers yet. Um, because most of these I don't recognize. Like, two is, uh, so the first one here is two. That one, that one is two. Oh. Oh. Uh. That's two. The other ones, though... Oh, God. I accidentally... Okay. <laughs> I keep accidentally hitting my watch here. Um, all the other ones here, though, I don't know what numbers those correspond to. Uh, because the school... What I assume is the schoolhouse has not uh, shown the rest, really. So maybe... Maybe the player can, like, infer which ones are which. This one might be four, but I don't know for sure. Because once it gets to that point in the, the little sequence that it shows that, it, um, it ends the sequence. Um, so I don't know. That might be four, though. But then seven, eight, and nine, I don't know. So the problem is, since I don't know what the the other um, four numbers are. <sighs> then... Then, yeah, that's a problem. But, that said... Any of these other ones... Could, could, could be brute forced, I guess. If they, if they can only be one of four numbers, and then likely not the same number for any of those, right? Um, so, the other ones could either be four, seven, eight, or nine, right? So then, so this, this, this one's here likely is four. Um, probably. Uh... <laughs> Stuck in his car for five or oh my god. That that seems like a real bad time. Um Yeah, I bet I bet driving around in in snowy weather in a uh <laughs> an MR2 is a real bad time. Um though it is a light car, right? So it can just it can just glide over the snow. That's how that works, right? Um so I'm I'm not sure if I want to brute force this just yet because this uh, my thinking might be completely wrong here too, like this this puzzle might not even be um, part of that uh, uh, that dome code or whatever it is. So maybe there's some other way I could figure out what four, seven, eight, and nine are yet. Yeah, that's true. They're gonna get real jealous and say impolite Canadian things. <laughs> Um, okay. So anyways, that's that was what I was thinking of for this. That you probably have to press, like, button one twice. And actually, let me just see. Okay. Let me just try. Three, four... Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One of those clicks is a a different sounding click. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, so it was not that. Interesting. So, uh, another thing that I noticed when I was going through the manual is that the manual makes a... 
big deal about audio cues. Sound plays an important part in Riven. Listen closely for valuable clues if you hope to complete the game. So there's at least at least one thing in this game that relies on some sort of audio cue to beat the game. And there, uh, the developer's note also makes a point of, um, for goodness sake, use a pair of headphones. So that's like double confirmation that there is some sort of audio-based puzzle or environmental thing that the player needs in order to solve a puzzle, I guess. And now I kind of wonder if if that's what it is, if you have to you have to press these buttons until they make this slightly different sounding click, um, which would not actually match up with the um, that code. Okay, that's that's a crunchier click. Okay, crunchy click. So that four three. Okay, crunchier click. That was six, I think. Four three six. Four three six three. Okay, crunchier click there. And nothing. Um, there is also this, uh, this that can be pulled. Now it's, now it's not, it's not making the sounds at all now. They all sound the same now. Okay, well, dang. <laughs> uh, so the, the other problem that I'm, I'm having with this game is the buttons and like interactive things blend in a little too well in this so that so this this originally was like this this was locked into place before um and i'm not sure what the point of that is uh because like there might be some other button here that i just haven't found yet i guess <laughs> um because unfortunately, for the most part, the cursor doesn't change to, like, a different color or anything. Um, the manual even says, like, if if it's not an important thing, then it won't, it just won't do anything. So, uh, for a game like this, where stuff can be really subtle, I don't think that's a great design choice to not have, uh changes in in like cursor cursor color or something some sort of hint for the player um so there is a a pipe coming in from from in here into here and i'm assuming that's what the what this is for but i don't think i've come across anything anything on this island that looks like a power source for that pipe. So... It's probably nothing doing there. Um... I don't see anything that looks like a secret door button anything here. <sighs> okay. So the next thing then was in here was 
a door or I guess a gate that's supposed to go to the big dome thing. So the big dome thing, I wrote down in my notes to take a look at that. That's on the to-do list. So in disc three, we can actually get almost all the way up to the, the big gold dome thing. Um, but the, the staircase was in like a folded up position, so I couldn't get up there. Um, and then disc three also has the underground spinny generator thing with the, the symbols on it that I wanted to take another close look at. Um, so this thing we can almost get to. And then there was this diagram with the, um, I think it was disc four had potentially the application for this, but I don't think I solved that one either. Um, I'm not sure how that puzzle works. This, I have no idea what this is a drawing of. Um, <laughs> uh, like this could be that, um, I took a screenshot of it later. Uh, so this, this is what I was talking about. This is on disc four. Um, so I, I pressed in the, the button there and it, it made this island here change to, uh, or it brought water up on top of it. So when you pressed like this button, it would make this, uh, fill up with water, but why and what? I don't know. I don't know the point of of doing that <laughs> to be honest I, I don't know I don't know what that's about um, this thing which made the real bad noise I'm not sure what this is for either um, it wouldn't let me interact with uh, any other parts of this other than tapping on that tapping on that made this thing activate um, I don't know if I tried using the handle on that before that's another thing to check out so that's on disc four is where that was um there's this puzzle here where you could move move these things anywhere onto here um but i have no idea what this puzzle wants from me because i haven't seen anything that looks remotely like that in any of the the journals and it's also not giving like audio feedback or anything on any of those. So that one I'll have to take another look at because I have no idea what that wants for me. This puzzle here, I believe this is how you learn how to interact with Peepo, the underwater thing, um, with the colors. Either this this tells you what color is which symbol or it's, it's a way to interact with Peepo. So if you hit that button, that summons Peepo and then we can we can communicate with people um and let's see i also made a map of the underwater uh rail car system thing there and i went to pretty much all of the places on there i i strongly suspect i need to go back to that classroom building that was that was in that area this is on disc two um because I was thinking inside that area, inside the classroom, there were tiles uh, suspended along the upper part of the wall. And it, it got me thinking back to like early, early school stuff of when you're learning, learning letters and all that. And there would be the alphabet would be on one of those things and they'd just be all around the, the room. So my thinking is that might be how you're supposed to learn the alphabet in the game. And then the game maybe expects you to, um, uh Oh, did the game lock up? Hello? Why is my curse? Okay. <laughs> the game just kind of stopped there for a bit. Um, and maybe you're supposed to, to figure out the written language based off of that and then translate all the writings in the game based off of that. So if there are 26 of those tiles in that classroom, which I don't think there are, um, then that's likely what that is. And uh, it wouldn't be the first time on the stream that I've had to translate a language completely, but uh, it wasn't exactly a good time the other times I had to do it. 
So this thing is a holographic per, uh, camera, I guess. When you sit on this chair, you're able to record presumably yourself um, as a hologram. And then that's shown in the temple that's not far away. Um, I looked at the VOD again. Uh, and when you open the door from the outside going into the fish temple, um, the same, like, older dude in the hologram that we saw in the schoolhouse was the same person that was in the hologram at the temple when you go there. Um, so, I still don't know who that is, but... It's just something that I noticed. Uh, I need to make sure that the temple door is open. Okay, so that is open. Um, I'm not sure why the door was closed the first when I came back here, actually, now that I think about it. That's a little odd because I didn't close the door. Um, hmm. Uh, okay, and then the kind of the last thing that I noticed when I was going through my notes and taking screenshots and all that is that the the balls the, the sphere the wooden sphere ball things with the symbols on the back of them I noticed that almost all of those were found in disc 2 in in that little island there the only exception being the one inside the lab in disc 3 and the only reason why that was there, according to the journal in that room, was because he, he took it from the village and brought it to his lab to, to study it. Um, so my, my hunch yesterday was in order to like beat the game or beat that village or the, the island or something, you need to go to each of each of the wooden balls and interact with them in the order of the number that's written on them. Um, and my thought was there'd be like three balls on each island or something, and you had to go to each one and, and hit them all in order and do a big old scavenger hunt. But if they're all on the same island, then it, it would be more feasible for the player to actually do that and do them all in the order that um, you find them. So based off of that, if there's nine balls, um, then we still have, I think, four left to find. And I have not found the one with the, the number one on it yet. So there's, there's another one out there somewhere. Um, I'm also still not sure what the point of this is supposed to be, other than this is a holographic projector. This is where the, the dude's Wizard of Oz face is. Um, but I'm not sure about that. And then here's the Peepo statues. So we got a Peepo here. Here's the, the tusks. This one's got a symbol on it. And then it's got the offerings knocked over. And then the red is off to, off to the side here. And then the other one over here, it's the same deal. Offerings in the middle. And then the red stuff is to its left. So... Like, maybe this this is a hint as to how to solve the communication puzzle with the, the real-life Peepo in, um... I think it was disc... 4 is, is where you interact with Peepo. You get to there from the Dragon's Head in the village will take you to a transit station that goes pretty much directly to that. Um... So, as far as my to-do, before we do that, though, uh, we want to take the transit here. Let me just double check if there's another, if there's a wooden ball around here. I don't think there is. Okay. All right. So we get another exciting, exciting roller coaster ride here over to Island 2.
All right. Always exciting. Okay, so it's gonna ask to save the game, and then I gotta open the lid on my PlayStation. This one. Sure. Okay. I don't know why it asks you to save again after you've clearly already done so. Okay, or even this too. Alright, and then we get to do that again shortly. Because we're taking the minecart ride over to disc 3. Okay, so disc 2. This is where all of the rolly balls are. Um, so there should be one over here. Yeah, one right here. So these things. So this one has, I believe that's a number five. Um, no, that's number three. So this would be, if we had to do these in order, this would be the third one that I would interact with, I guess, to maybe solve a puzzle. Um... This way. Okay. So before we get onto this. So there's no blue button here. But there is one off here to the left. So I was. The, the thought crossed my mind that maybe that the blue button does something else here that it did in other places. But. That's likely not the case now. So this this button here. this. So if I press this... Okay, so that's that's likely nothing. Okay, so that's if the the transit thing is not already there, it will it will bring it to you. Um... So if you go down here, this is where the the weird walrus things were, and also another wooden ball. And then this also goes to the uh, the cliffside village, I guess. The and the um, the water water transit minecart thing, um, which I don't immediately have a reason to go there right now. Hey, Drew. Good to see you. Um, because I know there's still stuff I have to do there, but I'm not sure if I could do it just yet. So the where I potentially learn how to read um, the language of the, the, the place, I would learn it there. And then there's also the weird um, the pull cord to bring down the, the trapeze thing. I'm pretty sure I need to have the assistance of Peepo, the big underwater beast thing with the tusks, before I can do anything there. Um, so the way down to Peepo was this way through here and then to another transit station over to disc four, but I don't think I want to go there just yet. I think I want to go here and then take this minecart ride over to disc three because we got some stuff to, to find in disc three. goes very underwater. Alright. 
Okay, so there's a few things I wanted to check out in this area. After we do a disc swap, of course. <sighs> hey, Treachery. Alright, so that deposits us here. There's also this rock crusher that I haven't been able to do anything with yet, too. I should see if I can get that to work. Uh, 30 hours in the woods? Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Now that's, that is out in the woods. Jeez. Um, okay. So what is this? I don't know if I ever interacted with this yet. Okay. So I probably need to go over to the... Um... Huh. Okay, so I want to divert the power to the Rock Crusher, because I didn't actually do anything with the Rock Crusher last time I was here, so maybe we can do that now. Okay, let's go see what the deal is with that. Okay, so we want to go up this ladder. I think that's probably what I was doing wrong last time. I didn't try going back up the ladder. Okay, what's this going to do now? Okay. Uh... <laughs> um... Okay. Alright, hold on. I have serious business. My, my sister is texting me about cats. <laughs> so hold on. No. <laughs> uh. Okay. All right, I'm just texting back. <laughs> she she's texting me some some kitties nearby. Um, because she knows I want a Siamese, but the ones that she texted me, I've seen before the listings for them, and these particular kitties, I, I don't want to sound callous or anything, but I don't think I want to deal with, with the kitties that she texted me with, because they have, they are very special needs kitties. 
Neither of them have teeth. <laughs> so you have to, like, grind up all their food and basically hand feed them all the time. And that's... I don't... I don't think that that would be a good fit for us. So I'm sure a, a master cat handler would would be much better equipped to deal with those kitties than than either of us are. So <clears throat> Okay. Um, okay, so the Rock Crusher, I, th I think the Rock Crusher is just there to, um, to, like, show the player how the power system works, maybe, of, like, hey, this didn't work before, but now it does after we move this valve, you know, um, Okay, so that actually wasn't why I came to, to disc three, but I just wanted to see if that did anything. And it did do something, but I don't think it did anything constructive. Okay. Hey, Sikolan, thank you. I'm gonna need all the help I can get with the disc swapping. So anyways, I texted her uh, the ones that um, from the nearby shelter that I think would, would be good fits. But neither of them are Siamese, but I can I can live without a Siamese cat. <laughs> I just would like one, but I'm not dead set on getting a, a Siamese. Another good option would be a ragdoll, but those are expensive cats. <laughs> so unless you can you can luck out and get one from a shelter, they uh they have large price tags associated with them. Not like that's a big showstopper or anything, but I think I'd rather adopt anyways. So, yeah, ragdolls are really cute. They're cute kitties. But I'd rather adopt than buy, you know? So. Okay, so this thing. Okay, I'm gonna mash. Okay, so mashing on click doesn't really do much um yeah russian blue cats are cute too it, it's always weird that they're um the the blue coloration for cats just means gray why don't you just call them gray <laughs> come on cat fancy you, you can't call them blue they are literally gray cats <laughs> come on so this thing i'm not sure what the what this is like i think this might be a peephole or something or a camera um Munchkin, are those the one the the short legs? The everything else is normal except the <laughs> short legs. Oh, I don't think I've ever done this. What is this? Okay, maybe I have done this. Um. Okay, so I'm not sure. Hmm. Health problems, yeah. Yeah, it's always like the goofy looking animal breeds that have the worst problems because they had to, to inbreed the shit out of them to, to make them work. Because I think, was it French French Bulldogs or something have this the same issue? Uh, barn Cats, yeah. <laughs> all, the, uh, all the listings for Barn Cats around here are always have just like the most, the most placeholder names. So the, the barn cat here is called Flavor Town and uh, like Guy Fieri. <laughs> they don't even bother putting up pictures of the barn cats. Like the, the picture says barn cat on it and they name him Guy Fieri and then you can go get one for your barn. But there's plenty of farms and stuff around here that that you would need a barn cat around here. Because I didn't know this, but apparently 50% of the country's lettuce is grown within, like, five minutes of me. Um, and the problem with that is that there's apparently a crop disease going on right now um, that's killed a whole bunch of the lettuce crop. So lettuce is, like, five times the price it, it usually is. Because <laughs> the, there's this weird plant disease going on around here. 
Um. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah, cat cam. Unintentional cat cam out front. Um. Okay, so around here should be, yeah, this thing. So this thing I did not figure out last time I was here. <sighs> so. So from right here, this all looks fine. Um. This, this looks like, hey, we should be able to go up the stairs, right? Okay, it's this, the, the top section. So this, the stairs have collapsed and we can't do anything. And there is a lever here, but... Uh... Hmm. So there is writing up here, but I can't read the language, so rip. Uh... But yeah, I suppose I can... Alright, hold on. Uh... We have important business here. Here, search. All right. So the the kitties. So this one, this one I like. I texted this one to my sister. I like this kitty. This is a cute kitty. It's a big, big old floofy, floofy kitty. Look at that. Look at that kitty. <laughs> um, and the other one, so they, they have some calicos. They have multiple calicos at this place. Um, they have a tuxedo cat. Kenji. Tuxedo cat. Uh, but this one. Juniper. So Juniper and Marilyn are the, are the two that I texted her. Yeah, like my my old cat that I had for 16 years looks a lot like a lot like this. Look at that cute boy. But we'll see. We've been meaning to get a cat for a long time, so we might actually finally get one. Who knows? <laughs> so th those are the kitties that we're looking at. Um. All right. Yeah, cats cats own the house. We're just renting the house from the kitties. Uh, there's all that. Uh, oh, the black and black and white cow pattern one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how this, what the game is expecting for this. Uh, Killing snakes and bringing them in, yeah. That's usually outdoor cats just do that. They're they're making themselves useful. They bring little presents. There's one we used to have that was outdoor would just bring in like birds and shit all the time. And just deposit them in the, the back porch. Uh so yeah, I don't I don't see like any power source or anything here to to power that, um, the stairs, so, I don't know. Broken tail, yeah. Yep, and well, that's, that's how we lost one of our cats, was it got, uh, it likely got attacked by a coyote, and just had to be put down. So, that's why we don't have outdoor cats anymore. They're all just exclusively indoor cats. We have lost too many kitties to, uh... to coyotes around here. So... And I'm sure people in my neighborhood are learning that the hard way lately, now that we've got a pack of coyotes nearby that moved in within the last few years. 
Um, okay. So... So this over here... On this table... So this is the one exception to... To these things. Um... Yeah, getting hit by a car, yeah. Well, that's that's omnipresent danger anywhere really, but but in California it's it's uh, coyotes and to a lesser extent mountain lions slash pumas. Um I don't know if I ever pressed this blue button. Well, you can have a barn cat. It would just be very unhappy indoors. <laughs> or you have a catio. Depending on on living arrangements. I don't know where that what that blue button does. Maybe that maybe that did this. Maybe the blue button made this work. Usually the blue button is for calling transit. But why they would put that there, I don't know. Okay, so that, those are s clearly still in the down position. Huh. Maybe you have to, like, pump this? Maybe... Maybe this is... Yeah, some kitties truly aren't happy unless they got some sort of access to the outdoors. But the lazier the, the cat type, the more indoor adapted they are. Well, you can tell if it's a ragdoll. Um, well, I guess they, they look similar to uh, Persian cats, I think. But it's just, it looks like a Siamese cat except very long hair and floofy is generally what they look like. Okay. I'm trying to think of where I want to go next here, then. And I think Disc 4 probably has the most potential for progress. Unless there's something I missed out here. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that's the other problem with indoor cats and having plants, too, is that they're inevitably going to want to chew on the plants and then get very sick and barf all over the place from eating the plants. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's a lesson all, all cat... Cat maintainers have to learn the hard way is cat really wants to be outside, but outside is not a good place for the cat to be. <clears throat> I know, right? Is this is this toxic to cats? Is this just toxic enough to cats that they'll <laughs> they'll eat it and immediately barf? Man. God. Yep. Okay. So let's turn this around. I want to check this if this has the, the exit on the other side of it. So far it's only been the case of one of these that uh, there's been stuff to do on the other side of the, the thing. Hardest and least for the cat. Oh man. <laughs> You're a brave man to, to try that. Because they're, they're either going to love it they're going to attack you when you put it on on them, or they'll just flatten themselves and you have to drag them along. <laughs> I don't think I would ever attempt that 
where I'm living now because like literally everybody has a dog and multiple dogs and maybe half of the people walk their dogs on a leash around here. Um, so the chances of like a dog running along and mauling my cat while I'm walking it would be higher than normal probably. So I don't trust dog owners to be responsible enough to to keep their dog from attacking anything that I'm walking. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, she texted me back. Let's see what she has to say about the kitties. Uh... <laughs> She's texting me more cats now. Okay. Underage stray singletons, foster home, BFFs. I don't... There's a picture of one cat here, and apparently it's a pair, so... Oh, whatever. I'll just... I'll talk to her about it tomorrow. <laughs> She can't send me a picture of one cat when it's a, a pair of cats. But this one just looks like a, uh, um, a tabby. Regular ass tabby. So, eh. Um, so I've been through there. Where did this go again? Oh, this goes up to the upper part. That's right. In the upper part, I think there was... Uh... Something else. Okay, so this area, this area had the puzzle that I don't know if I ever solved, maybe? I'm not sure. For the most part in this game, like, there's very little feedback as to whether or not you, you did anything. On vibes at the shelter, yeah, that, that's one way to do it. Because, like, the, the way that they did it in San Diego when I got my cats a long time ago was they would just take like 30 cats from from the living areas and put them in a a room that holds maybe six people in it and just have 30 cats in there and then <laughs> you just you just uh uh speed date speed date like 30 cats at once and then once you see those kitties you go to another room right next to it that has another 30 cats in it <laughs> and then you just you meet all of the kitties um but i think that was just that particular shelter in uh in southern san diego that just had a billion cats at once because like the shelters around here have like at most 15 total at a time um okay yeah cat cafes also have that uh i don't think there's any cat cafes around here I would totally go to one if there was, but there's probably some up in San Jose, but I don't want to drive up to San Jose if I don't need to. Um, as man, I hate driving in San Jose. Uh, so I, I'm not sure what the point of this area is. So we can go up above this area. By pressing this button here, that is very hard to see. So this area is mentioned maybe uh where was it? I thought I took a screenshot of it. Oh, right here. 
<sighs> okay, so this was this right here. Um, so the squares pretty much line up with this. And the only one that isn't in like the same spot as this diagram is this little island here. And I currently have it activated. So I'm going to unpress that. Um, so I'm curious then if I hit what if I hit okay you can only have one of these pressed in at a time and the the thing that gives me pause I guess about this is that there's a big hole in this one and there wasn't a big hole in the the diagram that was in the the notebook so maybe this this there's something to this that this one has this um I don't know. <laughs> Single game of Sig 5. Yep. I noticed uh, when I was filling in my Steam account and, like, redeeming all my humble keys, um, somehow I have copies of Civilization 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I had no idea I had them. <laughs> like, like, sure, yep. I got those from somewhere. Uh, okay, so this thing. So I'm curious if this thing makes a different map when I go up to it. Uh, okay, this thing is loud, by the way. Okay, so this this is different from before. Interesting. Okay, loud sound coming up. Three, two, one. Huh. Okay. So... So this thing previously looked like this when I did the small island. And now it looks like this. And the the dot is here now. Okay. So I think I'll I'll make use of my cool screenshot technology then. And take a screenshot of that. Paste. Cool. Got it. All right. Cool. My screenshot technology actually worked. Um. Okay. So what about this? Can I? Oh, you can rotate it. But why though? Why would you do this? Like, okay, that's cool and all, but, uh, like, maybe it wants you to interact with it? Why would you do this? Okay, I guess, I guess I'll go click on another one out there and see if this changes. So this is actually next to, um, another baffling puzzle. Uh, this puzzle is nearby. And maybe that gives you information on how to do this puzzle at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm also not sure why you would spin the model. Do this one. All right. So previously in the game, it was mentioned by one of the the researcher guy that there's a bacteria in the water in this area that um, causes it to become semi-solid, and anytime it gets near a heat source, it rises away from the heat source. So this is actually bacteria-filled water that is being heated from below and it's being expelled through water pipes at the top of these island things and then it's just kind of gooping at the top of of these things 
Um, but why though? I don't know. Why is it? Why is it doing that? I don't know. Like this might also change something below this area because I know there's a basement below this. Um, but why? I don't know. Okay, loud sound coming. Three, two, one. Okay, this... Okay. So this was the L piece, huh? Okay. Like, maybe you're supposed to... To get these all to fit within... Oh, this is different too. Uh, okay. Each of those squares you can press. Uh, but again, why and to what end? Why would you? Why would you do this? Um, okay, that one. Okay, there's. This, um, this actually looks a lot like the, uh, Island 2, the, um, the lake, the reservoir lake, I guess. Like, maybe you're supposed to... Um, select the one that looks the most like, like a riven area. And then that solves the puzzle, maybe. Uh, so this, so that, that's maybe it, I don't know. And maybe you have to do that for each of the, the pieces here, maybe? Oh, because, okay, we saw one that looked like this. We saw this um, in this island. In this one, I think. Can't believe we have to wait for this animation every time. But maybe it, another thought is maybe there's there's no actual point to that map viewer thing, and it's just we made a cool map viewer and it's not actually a puzzle, you know? <clears throat> oh, nice. Yeah, I think that's where they originated. An owl cafe. <laughs> well, you, you feed a mice or something. <laughs> God. There's owls in, in my area, and they are so fucking loud when they're hooting at night. God. It's like setting off car alarms loud. Alright, loud sound. Three, two, one. Alright. This one almost looks like Island 2. Huh. Well, I guess if we're... okay. If we're going by, like, the empty section, 
of this island, it would be this, where the big hole is. So maybe that's what I want selected? I don't know. Huh. Like right there would be where the, the big hole is. Weird. Okay. Sure. I still don't get this puzzle at all. <laughs> uh. Okay, loud sound. just a circular island. Huh. Okay. Oh, this might actually be Disc 3's island. One of these had like a a crater in it. Which one of these? I can't remember though. Maybe is this right here? Yeah, this right here. Hmm. I don't get it. I don't get this puzzle. <laughs> um. Okay. All right, I want to see if this if I can figure out this. So this thing Maybe you just have to brute force this, and then one of these will eventually be put on. It's not making like a different sound or anything on any of these. Yeah, I just... I don't get it. <laughs> there's like... There's nothing on this display or anything. So what... And I, I took screenshots of all the... Uh... All these. So this this is definitely what it looked like. Um, I don't see anything in there 
that looks like anything that would relate to this puzzle. Um, yeah, nothing there. Uh, where's the fish? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this puzzle wants from me. Uh, other than like trying to brute force it or something. Which I, I don't want to do. Surely there's there's a non brute forceable solution to this. Uh, that's blue, that's green. Uh, I don't see anything like in the surrounding area. And interacting with all of this really doesn't do anything. Hmm. So I could go back to the the mechanism that unlocked this thing. Which is kind of a, a spinning... Oh, I forget what the, the name of that thing is. I actually had to learn the name of what this thing was for, for school. A year ago, but I forget what it is now. I guess it was two years ago when I took the class for this the spinny frame viewer thing. Oh, that's a generator. Oh, I didn't realize that that's a generator. Hold on. There was a hint for this, actually. All right, hold on. I can see if there's any markings on it. Uh, so e that sounds about right, yeah? Okay, this is a generator. Okay, so just like the one we saw before. Uh, yep, first gif. Um, okay. I can't remember what I did to to get access to it here. I think I just spammed the button on this thing until it eventually worked. Because this thing doesn't look noticeably different. So I think I just hit this button a whole bunch until it... Okay. <laughs> you just hit the button a lot and then it stops. Okay, so the this was mentioned. Um, due to the continued disturbances, I have decided to install a coded access system into all of the domes. And I think that's a dome. So the first... The first one of these should be two, or the other one to the farthest left, and maybe that's two notches on the, on the thing, and then maybe four, maybe seven, maybe eight, maybe nine. I don't actually know what, what digits those are, but this might actually be how I, I learn what the other numbers are, maybe. Um... Because I know the first one is for sure two. Uh, so I'm hoping maybe it will make a different sound or something. Um, 
But I guess it doesn't matter what position these are in because they're they're always going to be like nine. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, seven, four, uh, two. Maybe this works. Uh, or it's from the right. So two, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There goes that idea. Uh, shit. Unless you just spam this button like the the other thing. And then it just works. No. Okay. So this, that appears to be a book inside there. Um, or like another journal, maybe. So if we can get access to that, it looks like we might get more hints from the game. But I don't, I don't know how to solve that puzzle. Uh, so there's, I think, one more little island here that I did not look at through the, the viewer yet. And it was the one in the upper left, I think. No, upper right. So we'll take a look at that one, see if there's anything weird with this. Like, it might also be possible that, depending on which of these you select on here, it, it changes something on the island associated with it. Uh... So I know the one on the bottom right is the island that I'm currently on. Uh Hmm. Okay. Loud sounds here. Three, two, one. That is just a dome. Okay, this is the island that is just literally a dome. Maybe this is how I get that, that stupid staircase to, uh, to work. see anything really out of the ordinary here. Yep, yeah, that's that sure is the dome. So if I leave that selected, maybe that does something to the that staircase. I don't know. Okay, so back down the elevator then. Uh 
And then I forget. Oh, I need. To, OK, I need to go back to the transit station and turn around the tram thing and then I can get underneath the island. Hmm. So there's the Here's the water up there for for Dome Island. Then there's this, and then underneath this is the big red area. Which we will get to in a moment. Okay, so we have to get in the transit thing and then turn it around and then leave the other side. Here, so this should take us to the big red room. And then in here, there is an elevator down to, I think a cave, and that's where we could commune with Peepo. And we could have gotten here from disc two in the village by going through the the dragon head thing so the problem here is i haven't i have not made any progress at all so far <laughs> for been an hour and a half i've made actually zero progress today Because I don't, I don't know if any of this is a red herring or, or what. So my last hope for progress here is, is Peepo, I guess. The Peepo puzzle. And maybe that'll unlock a bunch more stuff. I don't know. But it's not looking good. Lamalana. I was thinking about it today, and it, it, it just occurred to me today that uh, Outer Wilds is a mist like. Is this something? Can I. Because, as, as different as those games are, they have probably more in common than, than not. You obviously move around the game world a lot differently in in Outer Wilds, but structurally and how you get to the end game, they are very similar. Uh, all right, hold on. There was these pipes down here. What are these? Are these anything? Nope. Okay. Okay, so this is the Peepo room. <laughs> So a few things here. Um, so there's a red lantern. I 
at the top of the screen. So it's not currently lit red. Now it is. Okay. So sometimes that's lit, sometimes it isn't. Uh, so I think this brings up the Peepo communicator. Yes, okay. So... Okay, so the, the lamp isn't red. Alright, hold on. Okay, lamp is currently not lit. Uh... Fam. So, uh, this one should light up this thing blue, if I press that. Yes, okay. So that didn't change the lamp here. Um, this one is green. So whenever you move that, okay, so it's still not lit up. It deselects what you had selected, so this should be green. Okay. Still not lit. Yeah, it probably is. We, we did get a shortcut earlier by dropping a ladder down, so I'd say that qualifies. Uh, this one is yellow, and then there's another one that's gold. Yeah, so this one's yellow, this one's gold slash orange. Um. Okay, so Peepo, Peepo made a sound on this one on yellow peepo noise on that one so if we look up that's still not lit but there's no peepo in sight so if we turn that off So what if we press it again? Do we get another peepo noise? No. Okay. So this one? So that's orange or gold. And we do get a peepo noise for that too. So we can actually summon peepo with this one. So those are the more reddish colors. And actually I didn't check to see if the does that make a noise? No. Okay. So that's still not lit. Um, so we'll turn that off. And then this one counterclockwise. When you press this, I believe this summons Peepo. So before I press that, I'm going to see if the lantern is lit. It is not. Uh, so we press that, the camera pans up, and then the lantern is lit now. And then Peepo appears. Hey, buddy. And then Peepo just leaves. So we've had two different cutscenes with Peepo before. The first one we got with Peepo, he, he kind of hung around a little bit longer and then still left. 
And then we started to get this variation where people just shows up and then immediately bounces. Um, okay. So when that's not pressed, did that... Okay, so that turns on the lamp, the, the big red lamp. Uh, and then this one over here doesn't do anything, I think. Yeah, so that one's pressed in. That didn't appear to, to light anything. And that's still not lit. Bam. Uh, what is this one? This one is... blue the bluish teal one so we've essentially gone in a full a full circle so we got teal green yellow uh orange peepo and literally nothing which which could be like maybe that's that's black or black or white or clear or nothing, I don't know. Um, maybe this means... Okay. Okay. So maybe that means red then. Alright, hold on. Maybe this is actually teaching colors. Uh, maybe that's black? I don't know what red is though um let's see this one that that and that is red and horizontal line gold um green so this is yellow but I could have sworn there was only supposed to be six colors in this game so maybe that journal entry was just wrong that talked about colors before this. Although superficially is based on a six color system, I'm convinced that it, there has to be a deeper connection to five. I will continue to investigate. And then it showed showed this. And most of those are colors. Like I think four of those are colors and two of them I think are red herrings. Maybe. And then this mechanism actually does show what all the colors are. Including lack of color, I guess. Um, but why? To what end? <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm curious if, if you have to do these in a certain order to get people to, to hang around. Um, like if we do... Okay. So if we activate this one and then we go back and summon Peepo. If this does anything different. that one was even more different than the other ones he just doesn't want anything to do with us I guess okay let's let's try again Peepo oh shit
I, uh... Uh... So, hmm. Okay, then Peepo just doesn't appear anymore now. We've scared off Peepo forever. <coughs> Baby, come back. Oh no. Our little buddy's gone. Um, let's see. So if we go to like orange, this one. <sighs> so I think there's another puzzle related to this. And that's getting access to the upper level of... Is this going to make peepo noises? Is peepo just gone? Maybe I solved the peepo puzzle. <coughs> hmm. So maybe peep... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Peepo's just... Huh. So it's either our friend or hates us now. I... Maybe I'm soft-locked now. Uh... So this was a surveillance thing. Last time I used it. And it let us peep on, like, I think the village. Yeah, the village here. It didn't let you spin these things. So it just lets you select between two cameras. Uh, and what this was? Okay. Oh, this was in the lake. Oh, I recognize this now. This is the lake. Okay, and this this is where I wanted Peepo to to go to. I want Peepo here. Um Okay, hold on. Because that's that I think is the the puzzle that you need Peepo for. So I probably want the camera facing that. And then I guess this is how you check check where Peepo is in that uh in that area. So then you want to go over to this and then <sighs> The puzzles in this game are just so they make so little sense like <laughs> I was thinking about this this afternoon of like at least the puzzles in mist gave you like feedback whenever you you did something in them in this it just feels like I'm just flailing around in these puzzles with no clear solution or feedback or anything to them uh So this is the one that doesn't light up at all. Okay. This one was the blue one. Does that get peepo noises? No. Okay. I kind of wonder if this is the puzzle that they want you to have headphones on for, for audio cues. Green does not get peepo noises. This 
This one should, if Peepo's still out there. So it hasn't any more. So either I did something correctly, I did something very wrong, or the puzzle needs to be reset. It could be any of those things. Yeah, we're not getting any any Peepo feedback at all. Uh <sighs> This game just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I don't I don't see a peepo around there. But maybe peepo's there now because I drove him away from from this area and, and put him over by the the village lake, maybe. That's that's the only only thing I can think of is maybe peepo's over there now. I guess, and I'm, I'm not even sure if that's, like, the solution to that problem. For getting up to the upper level of the, the village area, you know? And these things don't do anything, so... Yeah, because there's... <laughs> There, there's like a few possibilities, but that one, that's the one that makes the most sense, you know? Like, I could just leave this room and, and turn around and go back and see if Peepo's back now or something, but maybe that just resets the, the whole puzzle and I did end up doing it correctly the first time, you know? <laughs> so, I just, I don't know. Um, so, this goes back to disc 2 and the village area. as we wait for the transit to come back. Come on, game. You're a video game. You don't have to make the player wait real time for this thing to come back. Uh, just use movie magic. This is always kind of like the the point where things really start to to grind in games like this where you've been to every single room you've explored every thing that you can explore and so you just need to solve enough puzzles or the right puzzles to actually see more of the game and sometimes you're not sure where progress is okay just five one, two. All right, that should be disc two. My headphones keep getting caught on the microphone here. Okay, all right, I need to step away for a minute. I will be back shortly with more mist.
Okay. Ugh. So we are on our way to I guess the the lakeside village, I suppose. And this is the weird back entrance to uh to the village. The remake with some direction, yeah, uh, probably not. <laughs> and I also suspect that um, uh, it's probably random in this what each symbol stands for which number, so that every playthrough is different. You have to find find each each one differently because because what I suspect is you have to go and and figure out what order to to roll these wooden spheres in in order to maybe get to the end game or beat the game or something um so it wouldn't surprise me if that that's how they handled that because I know in the mist remake uh the 3d mist that came out not that long ago um that's how they added a randomizer function to it was they randomized the end game symbols that you had to type into some things uh so players couldn't just beat the game within two minutes of starting the game like you normally would be able to in uh in regular mist um <clears throat> oh shit yeah i like the what makes me suspect I just <laughs> hold on I just spilled my entire cup of water on the ground luckily it missed all my audio equipment <laughs> all right hold on so I, I I suspected they did that um when I was in that classroom area and they showed the uh, the symbols on the bottom of that mechanism that shows you how to count in this game. And the symbols for it looked too good, I guess, is, is what kind of gave it away to me. Um, ugh. Random good luck. Yeah, well, that's uh, that doesn't stop a lot of people from speedrunning randomized games, so... In fact, I like I used to speedrun Daggerfall, and that um, uh, had a lot of randomized stuff in it, and that that made me prefer that run over some other stuff uh, because it was randomized. Because you eventually see that there are patterns to the randomness. So, yeah, points to Chandler, and that's. Might as well be RNG the speedrun as well, so. <clears throat> okay, I think this is the way down to there. Here's this cutscene again. There's there's that guy up there. 
Okay, so they're warning the village, I guess, that we're coming. So that's probably what that this cutscene is. So we probably have to see that every single time we come here. Um, do I like play randomized? Yeah. Uh, I think this was the way down to the village. Yeah, I recognize this. Yeah, like that's that's what's so popular about stuff like rogue rogue lights and rogue style games is that their their entire design is based around random stuff. Okay, I'm trying to remember where I parked my thing, and I think it was over here. So I don't see people around here, <laughs> and I need I need people in this. In this structure over here. Uh, okay, my thing should be here. It is, okay. Alright, hold on. This, um, this thing I left pointing at the, uh, the large cone-shaped structure. But, it looks like it reset itself, maybe? So... That doesn't bode well for this puzzle, I guess. Um, okay, where's my map? Okay, so we're currently at the docks, so we have to turn around. And then going straight from here should bring us to the Peepo station Yeah, just going straight from here should go to Peepo Because it feels like this the place where I'm going to right now is the most likely spot for progress But it feels like I, I maybe need something red while I'm here in order to summon Peepo. And I don't have anything in my inventory, and the game hasn't let me bring anything with me. Like a flare or something. Uh, to, to bring Peepo to here. So I'm not sure what the game wants from me. Because this, this does make people noises when I think you're standing here or here. Yeah. So that's, that's people. And it doesn't give you your cursor back until that audio cue is gone. So this this must be one of the audio cues that the manual was talking about. Of, hey, play this game with headphones. There's audio cues. It still hasn't given me my cursor back. Come on, game. Is this because I upset people so much underwater? Hello? Game? Give me my cursor. There we go. Okay. Uh... So I can't, like, click in the middle to do anything. Looking up. So I'm still not sure what the game wants from me here. Because I can pull this... There's a... a a uh, pull chain right here, that thing. So 
So pulling this drops down... Drops down this. So you'd think I'd be able to grab that and just write it up, but... The game just doesn't let me interact with it at all. And I can't pull this again. And then that just goes right back up. So my thought was, you have to summon Peepo, and then Peepo, like, bites onto that, and then you ride Peepo up to the upper level, maybe? Uh... Okay, so does the game let me press start here? No. It, it just doesn't... Literally doesn't let you do anything right here. All you can do is just have the, the cursor in the middle of the screen before it leaves. So then if I go this way, one of these screens has the peepo noises. What is that? What? That's new. It almost sounded like that was a disc error or something. Okay, what if I pull this now? <laughs> like it played the wrong sound. <laughs> Oh no. People hit a mine, I guess. <laughs> like, it won't let me interact with this at all. Go this way, can we look right? And this way. Is there peepo noises? No. Interesting. So if you go this way, there's there's the big thump. But but why though? Why there? <laughs> uh Cuz I don't I don't see anything different. There's, there's peepo sounds. So now that we heard a peepo... Maybe now this works? Alright, maybe, maybe peepo has been summoned with this very specific movement around the circle. Maybe. Hey. <laughs> right. People's firing the torpedoes. One ping only. Uh.
I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get what this puzzle is. People, what do you want from me, buddy? What the hell? So it, it did it there facing that direction. So sometimes it's just people, sometimes it's just explosions, sometimes it's both. So maybe it's like every fourth screen or something, it does a peepo sound. just happen to have to be on this screen before it works maybe Now it stopped doing it. <laughs> uh, this doesn't make any sense. Like, what does the game want from me at this point? And I can't like leave this in the lower position. It just won't let me do anything. I can't click on anything. It's just goes down and then goes right back up again. Well, and as far as I know, this is the only way to get up to whatever that upper level is. Oh my god, Peepo, why? Peepo. And there's explosion, Peepo and explosions. And it sounds like it's coming off from the left. Because that, that sounds like Peepo is attacking the, the underwater observatory, is probably what that sound is. But... I'm not sure where that observatory is. That's on Island 4, and we're on Island 2. Like maybe you have to hang out here until Peepo shows up? I don't I don't see people anywhere I 
It's definitely not playing the sound. Yeah, this is just... I don't know what the game wants from me. <laughs> game, please. Use your words. Yeah, 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 Peepo. So Peepo and then explosions. I'm clicking... Clicking the action button to get the stop, the... Uh, to play back the one thing that you can skip in this game apparently nothing else <sighs> god i've made actually zero progress we're like we're over two and a half two and a half hours into this i haven't made any progress today what the fuck man This is frustrating. I don't know what the game wants from me. Okay, so we're gonna go to the hut over here. Is anything? No. Okay, I don't see any sign of Peepo here. Okay, back into the, what I presume is the classroom. So, next step is... I'm gonna count these tiles on the upper part of the wall. Alright. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. That it looks like there's one additional one, twenty three. So it may or may not be 23 or 24. One, two, three. This might actually be the alphabet up on the fucking wall. I can't believe this. Am I actually gonna have to translate the alphabet of this game? I was really hoping I wouldn't have to do this. But this might be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all that around the around the upper walls of this room. Oh good lord. So this this is how we learned how to count was this thing. And I think that these symbols down here are probably randomized from playthrough to playthrough. Um, so the, the symbol for the seed that I'm on the, in the game, this represents three, I think. Um, 
but if we we started a new game this might actually represent like six instead uh however the alphabet likely is not randomized probably because this doesn't look good enough to have been randomized um so great 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 uh I'm not sure if this is actually going to even help but a God, all these letters look very similar. <laughs> all these letters look very similar. E, C is fancy R. The Regal Cinemas logo. D is like a different kind, a very slightly different kind of Z. These are all like variations of Z. Like, why? Please vary your your written language. E is upside down. T. F is a two, it looks like. G is a three with an extra tail on it. H is, it looks like an E or a C. I is man trying to do this on like a shitty CRT TV probably actually impossible uh okay uh, I don't know why the eraser is not working on my pen and it's really annoying me I actually have to use it all the time in this playthrough which I J is very slightly different from the from I. Great. J I J K is also very slightly different. Dude, this this can't be what they expect the player to do. This is so stupid. Like it was it was bad enough in Lorbo having to to translate a bunch of Hieroglyphics. Uh, H I J K L. But like this is beyond the pale if they're asking the player to to actually do this. J J K L. M. N. And a lot of these characters look extremely similar. <laughs> like, extremely similar. Oh, P. Like, three of them are just variations on... Oh, good, my pen stopped working. <laughs> my pen stopped working. I can't even... Come on, pen. There you go. All right, pen is back. Jesus Christ. M-N-O... If I wasn't already molding about this, having my pen stop working. P Q looks like that. R S T U V U X Y Z. I don't think there's even enough characters for this to to be all of them uh that that one looks literally identical there's two characters that are literally identical this one and this one why <laughs> like bro yeah these two are literally identical i <sighs> dude this this can't be this can't be it and there aren't even enough characters this can't be it Jesus Christ, man. Uh, this one is an R with an additional thing underneath it. 
And then this only goes up to you, it looks like. So, I I think this is a dead end. I don't think this is anything. <sighs> this is so frustrating. I can't even think of where even to look now for any of these stupid puzzles. Because it, it feels like I'm closest on maybe the Peepo puzzle, but... I I don't know. I can't get people to do anything constructive. Uh So there's this here but I can't read this. Um and some of these characters that are on here are not on any of the tiles above above here like this the E that character is not is nowhere literally nowhere uh neither is this character just looking at the ones that i briefly jotted down here um so whatever that is on the tiles up here I, it probably isn't ABCs. Okay, is there anything in these? No. So this thing wouldn't let me interact with it last time I tried to. This is just a broken chalkboard, I guess. This thing is a hologram projector. Terekoi Dani, ki bayem rivat, al royem beetik tavom, ga bodonagayem. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. It just depends on what your definition of the note is, right? Uh So this doesn't let me interact with it other than the crank. So this, this is the thing that taught us how to count, and it told us most of the numbers except for four, because when it, when it got to four, this guy fell into here and then was eaten, and then the whole thing reset. So the symbol there may or may not have actually been four. It might have been for a number higher than four. I'm trying to think of where else I can even go now. Cuz obviously I want to I want to be able to get up to here. Like hold on. Can I turn on zip mode and just zip up there? So far every time I've tried to use zip mode it hasn't even done anything. So the cursor is supposed to change into a lightning bolt when you use zip mode and it will just fast travel you to where you want to go on the same island. God. Okay, maybe there's like another 
another spot here. So will this let me go forward from the hut? I didn't turn around. Okay, so you can't go forward left. What about forward right? No, okay. So I'm pretty sure my map of this area is accurate then. And I mapped out all possible locations you can take this thing to. trying to think of where else to even to even go to <sighs> lever hut cliff cave docks so this goes up to the, the lever hut I don't think messing with any of the levers is going to do anything constructive. But maybe there is some pathway that I, I overlooked up in this area. Because this does get us to the upper part. Climbing up the... Climbing up a big ladder to get to where we're going. And maybe there is something I missed here. So I'm racking my brain here. So the big dome in Island 3. I couldn't get up to it because the staircase was messed up. The staircase is folded up and I couldn't progress further. I could also get to the big gold thing from Island 1, Disc 1. Okay, so you can actually. All right, zip mode actually worked for once. Um, is there any sort of like secret door here? So here, I want to be able to get up to here. But it doesn't look like there's any sort of way to get up there other than taking the thing up and down there unless that's how you're supposed to get down and it's a one-way trip down and there's some other way to get up to there because I have been over here to to this village and I've been over to here that's where the the pizza oven is and where we first um, put our underwater tank thing on a lift over here. But it doesn't look like there's any sort of path that goes along here up to here. I think the path from here ends right about here. And then this is the school that we were at before. So I don't think there's really anything that I missed here. Like, there might be another path in the village that I somehow overlooked, because there's so many, like, forks on the road back there. I kind of doubt it, but it is possible. And then these were the switches that extended or folded up the bridges. So if you do that, that makes all the bridges inaccessible. Even though it didn't change anything on this screen. <laughs> um, like that might be related to Peepo. Maybe. 
but I'm pretty sure for this you just need to have all of them extended. Because only two of them were extended when you first came to this area, and you had to, to flip the bridges on the other three to, to get to some of those places. There's nothing here. <sighs> okay, zip mode down to the bottom. Now I see the utility of zip mode. Uh, so for this, we can't go forward as far as I'm aware. So we got Cliff Cave, we got Docks. Uh So the Cliff Cave takes us to the upper part of the village. I don't think it takes us to where all the houses are though. I think you have to go to the docks for that. This is the stop where you first get access to this thing. So through here, and then this is where the, the, the little water map thing was. Yeah, this thing that I think I drained. This isn't drained anymore. Or this, this used to have water in it. So that thing spins regardless of whether or not this this is this has water in it. What is this? Why why is this in particular get a different icon? Huh. Is there hmm 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 Okay, so if we use this then, this will put water into this thing. Oh, that's where the water comes from. But why though? <laughs> but why though? Why, why do this? So clicking on that still doesn't do anything. And that's still the same. <sighs> I'm losing my mind over this game. Okay, what if we use this again? We can't. Huh? Is this something? What? <sighs> what? What even? I don't... So there's, there's where we want to go. 
but how we get over there, I... Hmm. Alright, where does this go again? I think this goes to the... Where that lookout post was. Oh no, this goes down to the beach, okay. Which also doesn't really help me at this point. Okay, so I think I have to go back to my... Back to my tank. <sighs> this game just doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> like, I don't know what the game wants from me at this point. And then this thing I think is... a a lookout post with nobody in it. Like, maybe you're supposed to come to the village from this direction without setting off the sentry, maybe, and then that, that changes things? Possibly. I don't know. <sighs> this is really frustrating. Man, especially with the the slow pace of of movement in this, I have all the time in the world to just mold. So this brings us to the three-way three-way stop here. <sighs> and then this brings us back to the docks. Where I can go up to the village from here. The crazy part is, like, this ribbon is the one that, like, gets all the critical acclaim of, like, whoa, this is the best, the best mist light game, the best adventure game ever made, top 10 all time. I think this game is just bad so far. Like, not even average, much less good. I think this is a bad game so far. <laughs> like, Mist is so much better than this. Like, sure, this is a nicer looking game and all, but the part where you have to play it is vastly inferior to Mist, in my opinion, so far. Of, what, almost nine hours into it? And allegedly, this is a 10 hour game. So. I don't think the game's gonna get drastically better in whatever time is left. So this is where the village was. You can get over here, but I don't think you can do anything here. Because you can't get across to the other part of the village. So you can bang on the door, but that doesn't get you inside. I can't get to, like, the area above this, it looks like. Okay. So there's baby crying in the distance, but I think that's in that house that we can't get inside. So I think that's just there for... Ambiance. 
So that there's where I want to get to. How you get up there, I have no clue. What the fuck does the game want me to do to get up there? Cause it it doesn't look like there's any other way to get there other than other than this thing. And uh, I don't know what the game wants from me. So if I pull this, this is where that the underwater tank thing originally was. Which it actually won't let me even interact with anymore, it looks like. So that's where we parked the tank. Uh, and I don't think we can even park it there anymore. How did we even get to the tank before then? Huh. Maybe I'm missing something here. And then here is the, the pizza oven. That I don't think you can do anything with. And then over here was the, the two pizza making stations. And a loom next to it. This thing. Oh, this might be Peepo, actually. Now that I, I... I thought this was a bull when I first saw it. Like a, a charging bull. But this actually looks more like Peepo. With uh, the two tusks off to the side. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know how this changes anything. Cause even though these appear to be drums or something, you can't you can't interact with it. And then this just looks like a, a tapestry or some sort of weaving in a loom here, but again, it won't let me do anything with it. So the fact that this this looks like Peepo makes me think like I need to ask the villager about about Peepo, maybe, and then the, the villager can tell me how to how to deal with the gigantic fishbowl thing. But last time I was there, they didn't want to even open the door, much less talk. So. I don't think that is a viable avenue. <sighs> yeah, nothing, nothing here. Man, I'm just really stumped here and I can't look in the window. Yeah. Like, at least in, in Mist, the game before this, you could, you could talk to the people in the books. There were three people inside books that you could talk to and have brief conversations with. Well, it, I wouldn't say it's a conversation. They talked at you through, through FMV. But at least there was... NPCs in it. So far, there's been the guy with the book at the beginning, the guy who stole the book after we we teleported in at the very start, and he immediately died, the assassin who we saw for like five seconds total, um, and then like other villagers that we saw for five seconds total, I think as well, and then that's it, and then Peepo. We've had more interactions with Peepo than with humans in this whole game. Uh, well, there's five discs, and it's not like... <laughs> like, Mist, Mist had infinitely more character interaction in that game, and that was a one-disc game. That was a one CD for that whole game. 
<laughs> not five, you know? Uh. Okay, let's head back this way, I guess. It almost seems to me like there's this little break here in, in this. Like, you should be able to, to do something here, but... Well, they, they dithered the shit out of all the FMV in this game. Like, good old Sega CD. So that, that certainly cut down on, on space and processing for there. Yeah, for, for an FMV game as old as this, they might not even have needed to do any tricks to... to make things work. Well, I'm not sure if, like, maybe the PC version was on less discs or something. It's entirely possible that that might be the case as well. Um, what's this? Have I been here? Okay, that goes down to the red room. And then this goes back up to the upper part of this island. Because it... It feels like based off of where I've gone so far and which direction I've been, it feels like that that upper area that I want to get to in the lake area is like right on the other side of this. Um, I just on PC with the single DVD. Yeah, that's actually how I got Wing Commander four. Um, I never bought Wing Commander four when it was on CD because it was just so many discs and I, I didn't want to deal with it after playing Wing Commander 3 on um, on CD. But Wing Commander 4 actually came with the DVD drive that I bought for, for my PC. So <laughs> so that was a novel thing. And I think it was a dual-sided DVD, I want to say. Because it was the kind that was that didn't have any art on the on the DVD. It was just silver. Um This, this one's got the big sword stick, sticking out of the ground. Hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we we had in the in the computer rooms we had the the long um, containers for floppy disks that had the the flip up lid like that, and you could just ch -ch -ch -ch, like roll the decks through all the the floppy disks. We didn't have a ton of discs or anything. It was like a third of them were maybe like shareware floppies of like, here's Commander Keen and Commander Keen 4 <laughs> on floppy and like Doom. Uh, so going back the way I was coming was the the transit station and um, back down to the Seal Beach. I guess I want to go through the village again and see if there's something. So this this goes down to disc three. Maybe there's something in here I missed. MYST, see what I did there? Man, this is just... Really, really, really frustrating. <laughs> so why is this... Why is just this need moving pixels? So that's over by the, the sword over there. Why? Why does this need pixels? Uh 
Okay, so we can't go off that way. I'm just trying to see if there's any, like, paths that I I somehow missed. Because there, none of these are, like, clearly marked as, like, this is an area you can go, go straight down through. And you just kind of have to click and hope that you clicked on the right pixel somewhere. Okay, nothing that way. I think I'll turn off zip mode so I don't accidentally go somewhere. Okay, so there's that. This one gets very long <laughs> animated pixels. Uh, and yeah, nothing there. And actually, maybe there's something, something inside this. No, it's just 180 turn. Okay. I know that there's something down here because this is where one of the, the spinny orb things is. This, this one in particular makes a weird noise. Hey, Ocelot. Um, okay. And then this, this also does the thing of this one gives you the different cursor icon, but clicking on it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Why? Why, game? Why? Why you do this to me? <sighs> Alright, so folks just tuning in, I have made literally no progress today. I've been streaming for three over three hours now. I've made literally zero progress. <laughs> The most progress that I made today was consolidating my notes of stuff I did in parts one and two. I have not found anything. Well, okay. I found one thing that's maybe new and it's the being able to look at the different maps and spin them around in the map viewer room, but that's it. Yeah, this is, we're getting the full ribbon here now and it's, I am so frustrated. I am I'm not having a good time right now. Uh Okay, so this goes down to the dragon and that gets us to the the underwater underwater observation room thing. And yeah, there's there's that thing. I don't know if there's any significance to these beetles that are flying around or if it's just ambiance I don't know I don't know what the game wants from me at this point okay and I'm pretty sure there's no other hidden paths here <sighs> I guess the other thing that I found was in that the circular conical structure that's in the the lake village thing I found that depending on where you walk there and what direction you face, sometimes there's explosion sounds and sometimes there's the peepo sounds. But that's about it. Okay, and if we go right here, this is the red staircase up to the village area. I also hear a... So that's probably the, the power generator is what I'm hearing. Likely underneath here. Is probably what that is. There's also this up here. It looks like there's some sort of elevated walkway. Um up here 
that goes up there. So can I get to that, maybe? Alright, it's just gonna play the stupid cutscene again of the lookout. No. Okay. Alright, so above here, is that a ladder? Oh no, okay. Alright, is there some way up here that I can get to that elevated walkway? Maybe... This just looks like it goes back out to here again. Well, shit. So there, there was clearly some sort of walkway. Yeah, this. How the fuck do you get up there? What? How the fuck do you get up there? Is this what I... Okay, hold on. <laughs> Game doesn't have any rules except each player makes them up. That sounds... Possibly the dumbest thing you've ever participated in. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Make up the rules as it goes, huh? Uh, so it's it's off to the right. So whatever that walkway is, I think that's that's the area I'm trying to get to from above the lake is what that is. <sighs> so maybe there's a way to get to that from through the the front entrance. Nice. Yep, that's that's the the GDQ tabletop experience. It sounds like. <laughs> yep. So I don't. I don't see any, like, maybe that's the walkway, I guess, because this just goes down, and I need to, I need to be up here, so, uh, fuck. I'm pretty sure... Whatever, wherever progress is, it would be in disc two here, because there's this the most to do here. But and this is this scene is just for this axe, I guess, and that's it. Hmm. Well, back to disc three, I guess. Is there some other... Hmm. All right, back to disc three. Uh... Okay, you can skip those. All right, good to know, I guess. You have to press triangle to skip those. Oh man, the Riven experience. Okay, so. Disc three.
Ah, uh, Mahjong. So I'm not sure... So another, another possibility here, I'm curious what this valve is set to. Okay, so let's set to there. They use guides for all of them? Of course. <laughs> That makes that checks out. Okay. Though so still, ten hours in a puzzle game using a guide to just walk as a walkthrough. That's uh that's actually kinda long. Unless they only used a guide when they're stuck or something. So this is the boiler thing. I still don't completely understand at least one of the mechanics of this boiler. Uh And it was this thing on the left. This thing that connects into it. So this thing, whatever that is, I'm not sure what that does. Uh, huh. So my, my thought here for a potential place to look. So there's the area just past here where we put that the marble thing, which I think is called a fire fire marble in one of the journals that's used as a power source for something, I think. Um Reroll so you get the same layout. Nice. Okay, so this area here. So according to the manual, the manual kind of suggested that you could pick up stuff like this and put it in your inventory. So this thing, I'm still not quite certain the purpose of. So this, we we put the, the fire pellet onto there. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that... That checks out. Uh... Huh. Yeah, so I'm not... I'm still not sure what these things are exactly for, or why would you want to drop it down below. Because I don't think I saw anything like this... down below. So maybe, maybe something's different in that little generator room now, now that I brought that up and took the pellet out of it. Maybe you didn't want the pellet in there or something. Uh... Then 
down this way. So to this room. So this... This, we saw one of these in Island 4, and we were able to stop it and open it up, and it had the little slidey, the slidey things on it that I couldn't figure out what their deal was. Um, and then there's still this thing here that I... I don't understand. Well, if I just click on it a whole bunch, doesn't seem to do anything. <sighs> man, <laughs> I, just, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> mist is just breaking me right now, or riven. I keep calling it mist. Maybe that's. That's why. Uh. So you you beat the game an hour quicker than than I currently am right now. Oh man. Without a guide, huh? Uh. Cause like the worst the worst part of this is like I'm I'm not even sure if if some of these rooms are just red herrings, if, like, if this room has just literally no point other than lore, like... Uh. Oh, yeah, movement's faster. Yeah, that... Yeah, that would, that would change things a bit, for sure. Uh, okay, so this goes back out to this catwalk. I know there was a, a switch I could flip somewhere on here that... I think unlock the door. It was like right here was the switch. And this So that that changes a sound. Oh, that was the, um, the fan, is what that did. That was the, the cooling fan turning on and off. Uh, which I technically shouldn't need anymore, because that's what you needed to use to get into this building. Um. And then there was also, there was also, like, a the handle you could turn somewhere else over here too uh but maybe turning that cooling fan back on changed something here maybe maybe in here because now that we have this door unlocked we can access this room still so I hear the cooling fan now because it was above this desk up here yeah so that's running uh and then we've already read through that journal and then this was a note for the ball entrance to the bay Surveyors, yeah, so we've already read that. That just told us about the ball. Which I'm I'm pretty sure I already know what the ball is for. Uh this goes to the transit station to Island 4. 
I've already opened up the this and there's a burned journal inside and it didn't do anything constructive it just had a black video frame thing here so this this is not useful um So maybe now that I've turned on the cooling fan, um, have a look at my notes. Maybe like me show them on stream or, or look at them online, because I I don't have a huge amount of notes. Uh, like there's the map of the underwater lake. Um, I think I've learned how to count. A little bit with one, two, three, five, six, and ten. I don't know four, seven, eight, or nine. Um, I maybe know four. Uh, the colors, I think I have those figured out from the the light puzzle with the underwater thing. Uh, I made a note of where and what number the wooden balls that I've come across are. Um. And then I took screenshots of some important stuff, like this puzzle. I have no idea what the game wants me to do here, other than maybe brute force it. Maybe. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, this thing, I figured out that you could rotate the map, but to what end, I don't know why you do that. Um, and then figured out that these are all maps of all the islands in Riven, I guess. Um... Took screenshots. There's the coded access system to all the domes. I know the first code number is two, and the rest of them are either four, seven, eight, or nine. Where you use those, I don't know. Um, this looks like it's a diagram of the power plant providing power to all the, the islands. Now that I, I take a second look at this. Um... And yeah, that's, uh, and then the statue of Peepo here, Peepo either likes or doesn't like red is what I inferred from this and from the red colored, uh, lantern above the, the Peepo summoning area. But how that matters gameplay wise, I have no idea because the one place where I think I need to get Peepo, I can't get Peepo to do anything. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't. No. <laughs> Fuck. So it's just been, been me aimlessly wandering around for the last three hours. Because nothing that I've tried has worked. <laughs> uh, making some fancy ass cookies. Nice. Yep, it sure is riven. Yeah, at least you got cookies out of this. <laughs> I had delicious subway. I, re I remember that subway existed not long ago because I'm I'm still trying to lose some weight, so I figured I would start having a uh, um having subway again. And subway is a third of the price of the other sandwich shop that's near me, so I figured I'd save some money while I'm at it. Okay, so, so can this? So this still does literally nothing, and I can't I can't go up here. I would love to be able to go up to whatever this is, which I assume is a power station, but the game will not let me. Ugh, God. Yep. Good old five dollar foot longs. Cookie sandwich, okay. Okay. You should get an ice cream maker and make some some ice cream. Cookie ice cream. That's another perk of living where I live is that we get 
a lot of like fresh from the farm stuff and it's dirt cheap actually dirt cheap including ice cream so it's like for a third of the price of name brand ice cream you can get a just a like a garbage can full of really good ice cream <laughs> so now that I'm trying to lose weight, I can't buy those anymore and eat those anymore, but those certainly do do exist around here. Derp here, yeah. Well, yeah, that that area is expensive, but the area I'm in is also not cheap either. <laughs> you know? But at least some of the, the, the grocery stuff is not as bad here, because all the food is grown around here. Um... Okay, so I'm going to leave the fan on, and maybe this will change a puzzle inside here, maybe? I could have sworn there was, like, another another valve or something I could turn on this railing. And it wasn't just that lever. I could have sworn there was some other thing I could turn here. <sighs> And then I... Why does this look extra crunchy now? Huh. Oh, it's because the door is closed. That's why. Um... So I still don't know where... Where this thing goes to and, like, what the purpose of this thing is still. Like, we could put one of these on here and then... Drop it down. And you can drop it down without closing it. But again, why? Why would... Why do any of this? I don't know where that goes, what it does. Like... <laughs> and we can't do anything with this. Interesting, maybe you just had to wait for a little bit. All right, let's bring this back up. Oh, that was that closing down there, I think. So is this any different now? Yo. We, we caught ourselves a froggy, I guess. All right, actually, no, Froggy. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> froggy. Um. Okay, so this is a frog trap, but, but why though? But why though? <laughs> why? What is the point of this frog? <laughs> so you just have to wait here until it catches a frog, and then... And then... So the frog is red, and maybe it's like, it's a little friend for Peepo, maybe? That's the only thing I can think of, is it's... It's related to Peepo. Okay, maybe it doesn't do it until you turn this way. Okay, so we caught another... another frog, I suppose. But why, though? And, like, maybe you need to have the fan turned off. Okay, so what if we open this, but we... So it's not in the middle anymore. Can we grab this frog?
Do we have, is it third time the charm? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> please. Please, game. Like, maybe we need to we need to get the red frog and then we bring it to that water area and the, the, the conical structure and then that's how we summon Peepo, maybe? By by bringing the frog to the, the thing that comes down and then Peepo... I... This is this is some real adventure game logic, but it's the only thing I can think of because it's the frog is red, and that's about it. All right, please give me froggy, froggy, give me froggy. So the cutscene has been different every time, so I don't... I don't know what the game wants from me. Okay, so I guess that's how you're supposed to know that this is this is a trap, I guess. And that it closes. I thought this was like a grill or something. And I guess it does look a little bit like a bear trap, but... Like, I don't, I don't know what I would do differently here. Like, maybe I have to, I have to spam the, spam click on it, maybe? Froggy, can you please get in the, get in the trap? Did I screw this up? Did I send it down close? I don't think I did. Either that or it ran out of frogs. Maybe that's the thing? Is that there's no more frogs left down there? And we've we've completely wiped out the frog population. <laughs> Maybe this is a soft lock? I don't know. Uh so the trap is still there, and it's still baited. God. This game. This game sucks. <laughs> this, this game sucks a lot. Holy shit. Alright. Come on, frog. So it, it was usually get in the trap within 10 seconds. And it's now been 20 seconds. So I'm going to assume that all the frogs are just gone now. So now what? Like this this doesn't make any sense at all. Uh and I don't know, maybe maybe saving's a mistake here? Like maybe this is a soft lock? I don't I don't know. This could be a soft lock. Uh So I guess we can go back to Peepo. Which I need to go back to the minecart. Can I take the minecart back, actually? Or do I need to take, uh, go to disc four and then 
I'm not sure this is possible, actually, to go straight back. I think there was, yeah, there's this that goes back up to the mine cart, the other mine cart. Which I don't think I've taken this mine cart back before. familiar. So this is just going back to World 2. Oh, okay. I thought that I was going to do something something different. dangerously and not save. Alright, so we're currently on disc 3. So disc 4, 5, 1, have okay we don't have any frogs in our possession uh <laughs> nice um so i need to get to the docks And I can't remember if it's if I have to go to the beach to get there or through the town. I think it's through the town, I want to say. Just this way. <sighs> okay, this is new. What is this? Okay, it's just... So there's the lookout again. Okay, so it looks like every time you leave the island and go to a different one, the state of this lookout resets. And I wonder if that's what's spooking Peepo, maybe. Because it's making the same sound as Peepo is, or a similar sound to Peepo. So maybe you have to enter this area from uh, the beach rather than through here, and then that changes how uh, how this part goes. Is this even the right way? Was this where I even wanted to go? Uh, yeah, okay. It is... All right, we're gonna get in our underwater tank and we're gonna... <sighs> and 
just hope that maybe things are different now. I kind of suspect they're not, but maybe this this will work differently. Uh, God. This game is making me lose my mind here. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so now that we've we've done things with the red frogs, we have wiped out the red frog population in Riven. That maybe maybe Peepo is over here now, and maybe I can take this elevator up to the top part because the reasons. Let's see. Nothing looks different so far. So there's Peepo. So we get Peepo and the bangs. Okay. Alright, maybe things will be different this time. Yeah, I went. I don't even know if the red frog thing was even progress now at this point. Can't skip this cutscene either. So, spam clicking on this just doesn't do anything. Like, oh, fuck me, dude. I, I have no idea what this game wants from me. It almost feels like things things just go sideways when I come to this area and and that lookout sounds the alarm thing from his post. But I don't think there's any way to avoid that. But I, I feel like that's maybe what's screwing up this sequence. Is that happening? And there's got to be something to to hearing the hearing the people make these noises. Like why else why would they do that here?
I don't get it, dude. This game makes no sense. Ugh. Why? Okay. So where am I? Cliff Cave. Okay, so if we go here. So my thought is... The... Two things I want to check then. One is to go back to that underwater observation room and see if anything's different there. That maybe has something to do with the red frogs, though. I don't know if I was supposed to catch one of those frogs or what. I'm assuming not because it took my cursor away, you know? Okay, so this goes up to the the map in the sand. Up here, which is also a back way to get to this whole area. But the thing is, over here is another lookout post. There's There's a lookout post right here. That I'm assuming if you come to this area from somewhere else, it's going to cause a cutscene here with that lookout post. So you're probably in the same exact position that you were in before of right here, this guy. So I don't think there's any avoiding the alert being sounded once you arrive here from a different island. So this is just down at the beach. There's something... nope. So you can only turn 180 degrees here. <sighs> okay, so if I go back to the village then... We can, we can t kill two birds with one stone here. So by going back to the underwater observation room, it should also reset the alert state on this island, probably. And then we can also check up on what's going on with Peepo underwater to see if doing stuff with the red frogs changed anything. With Peepo. I kind of doubt it, but it's possible. Because I'm not sure what other purpose those red frogs would have done. So it's this way and then right. Then down here. Okay, we light the one on the right. Is it the Peepo statue? And then this takes us to the Peepo observation room.
Wait, this is going up. What? Accidental progress? <laughs> um, okay, progress. Uh, all right, so there's the generator. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, sure. Sure, I'll, I'll take progress. All right, we so we finally can go over here. So now what? There better be all sorts of stuff over here. Okay, so we can stop this thing now. I know how to stop this. You just press this button a lot. Until it eventually stops. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh-huh. So the gold symbol for that was that one, which I think is also the same as the other one. In World 4. Okay. So that's the only thing... Okay, it looks like there's a little bit more to this, at least, and it's not just this stupid generator. Okay. Is this puzzle any different? So these ones are blue and not uh, not silver. But again, it looks like there's... Okay, let's compare this to the other one that we came across. So the other one looked like... that. And this one... This one's blue. So, silver, blue. Silver, blue. But otherwise, I don't really see... big differences between these. This one also kind of looks like it's got a book inside of it. Um, okay, and it, it behaves pretty much exactly the same, too. Okay. <laughs> Great. Another puzzle I, I probably can't solve right now. Cool. Um, so what's over here then? This looks promising at least. Okay. So it looks like we got two levers here, maybe? Okay, push this one. Okay, that one doesn't work. This one? Is this an observatory, maybe? Is this a cannon? Can we? Sh are we shooting people now? Is this what the the explosions were earlier? Are we gonna get our revenge on people? Okay, so we're above this thing now. Okay, so this is where we wanted to get to. There's some sort of door here. <laughs> yeah, prepare prepare the cannons. Uh, okay, let's pull this. Maybe this is the fire cannon lever. Okay. So that, that's how you get in there probably now. Okay. Is that where they do the sacrifices to Peepo, maybe? And this is some, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom shit. Okay. 
Okay, hopefully that whatever state that was in stays like that. All right. It only took th over three hours to find this one progress, you guys. <laughs> Um, okay, and I think that's the only thing here, it looks like. Jesus Christ, three fucking hours to find that. Uh, okay. Okay. Took you a while to find this too? Yeah. Because, yeah, I've, I've never actually tried to use this, this elevator going the opposite direction before. So... Okay, so now I gotta remember where I parked my... my tank thing. Uh... Okay, that opens the door. So, I have to go through the beach to get there. Little marks, yeah, but I thought that was, um... That just pulling the lever made it go back down to the, the underwater observatory, though. <laughs> you know? Like, that was just a, a generic elevator use thing regardless of which direction you pulled the the pulley which is why I interacted with it before because <laughs> I thought that's how you got back down to the observatory area but but now the new problem or I guess the new complication this adds is that I thought that was going to be a quick way to get down to disc 4 from here but it appears that's not the case, and you have to go through disc 3 first before getting there. Um, so from here I want to go left. Back out to the front of the village. And out through here. Straight over the bridge. I would turn on zip mode here, but there's the possibility that there's some new thing that happens between here and where I'm going, so I think it would be playing with fire to turn on turn on zip mode here to save a few seconds. So there's gonna be a cutscene here that plays of the the things on the beach looking at me and then scurrying away. Right here. Can I skip this? Nope, you cannot skip this. It sure would be great if they let the player skip these cutscenes that I've seen like 10 times already. Uh, they let you skip the minecart stuff and the transit stuff between islands, but not stuff like this. Okay, follow this path all the way down to the beach. Yep, you can't on this. Uh, the power of the PlayStation is not mighty enough to handle skipping cutscenes. Okay, let me pull up my map again. <laughs> okay, so we were at the cliffs right now. So I think it would be faster for me to just go forward twice. It's, it's the same amount of moves regardless to get back to the Peepo Circle. Let's 
So now this has got me thinking of like, what was the point of the frog thing? The frog trap now? Like, <laughs> if, like, I, I thought this all revolved around Peepo, but I guess not. So maybe there's some other use for those frogs with the, with Peepo now and, and the temple or something. Because there, there sure is a lot of iconography around the islands uh, about Peepo. So... I don't know. And I'm not even sure I'd count the frogs as progress either, because it didn't seem to do anything other than we ran out of frogs. So... So, so far, we're only on one one official progress, probably, <laughs> out of this three and a half hours, four hours now, of, uh, <laughs> of Riffin today. Oh my god. Four hours, and we've only accomplished one thing. Maybe we'll have a second thing accomplished here soon. Okay, so that's still just the same, same thing before. Okay, I can go straight across this now. I don't have to walk in a big circle. That's nice, I guess. All right, this better fucking work this time. I really hope there isn't an additional step to this. And that it just lets me do this. All right. Okay, I think this worked. Okay. All right, finally, we can go up this thing. And this seems safe. Okay. All right, now what? Is there anything up here? Okay, so it's just a bunch of skulls. Got it. I wonder if this is the secret, the secret base of the rebellion. This looks like a prison. There's somebody in here, maybe. Okay. All right, sir, we'll let you out. This probably lets you out. Or it, like, drops you into a pit of snakes or something. Sir, <laughs> where did you go? Uh oh, am I gonna get locked in here? Is this is this where he pooped? We have to reach in here. Uh. Oh, bro, you could have escaped at any time. What an idiot. Okay, I think before I go in there, I want to go see what else is in the area first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, at least you can skip that. Thank God. Okay. Hit triangle to skip that. I'm half expecting to be locked in here again. Okay, good. And like you needed to do that to escape again. All right, what's down here? Oh, it 
it's a shortcut. Okay, well that's convenient. Oh, I was wondering what that was for. Okay. All right, cool. So, all right. Neat. Okay, this you can't skip. <laughs> they only let you skip very specific things in this. Can you skip this? Yes, okay, that one you can't skip. Okay. Let's go in here. What is this? I think this is a one-way trip. Okay. Uh-huh. What? I... Okay. Maybe that turned on lights behind me. Okay. Sure. goes back to the prison cell. It just goes back to the prison cell. Why would I do this? Uh Oh my god. Okay. So did I miss then? Is this another... Okay, sure. symbols that's probably people uh-huh uh-huh oh this is a puzzle I guess well then save real quick. I might be calling it here anyways, but let's take a little bit of a longer look here since it took so fucking long to make progress. Uh, okay, what this? Will it not let me even examine anything else in the room? It just dumps a bunch of... It dumps you into a room with, like, 30 symbols in it and that's all you get and you just have to randomly <sighs> there's no way this is real life you just 
Alright, what if we select Peepo? Oh my god. <laughs> there's, there's no way they expect you to do this. <sighs> Gator. Like, maybe they want you to to select wildlife that you've seen in the game world. I guess. I think there's been fish. So there's definitely been Peepo. Uh, these things we've seen, those are on the beach. This was the insect that we saw flying around the village. Saw those. Um, I don't remember those. One of these is probably the frog that we uh, that we caught. I haven't. S don't know if we've seen those. That's probably the frog, maybe. I think that's the frog. The camera angle keeps changing. <laughs> uh, or maybe that's the frog? That looks more like the frog. That sounded like it unselected something else. I haven't seen that. I don't remember seeing those. Okay, well. So I think it unselected Peepo. Yeah, so it looks like some of these are getting unselected. And it looks like you can only have three or so at a time. So, okay, we will. <laughs> I saved before I started moving these, so I think we'll figure this out next time on good old Riven here. Unbelievable that it took almost four hours to do one little bit of progress. Like that's that's like La Milana levels of futility. <laughs> oh man. But progress is progress. It could be worse. Could have made literally no progress, which I have done before in I think La Milana 2, I want to say. So, hey. Could be worse. Could be worse. Okay. Oh boy. Good old Riven. Yep. It, it almost makes me appreciate more like the, the Zork and the text adventure stuff of like The, the, the gameplay similarities, I guess, between those and this and those, uh, the text-based games at least feeling a lot less frustrating because they moved as fast as you could type and read. Whereas this game, you have to click on something and then wait for a little bit and then click on something again and go somewhere else after a short wait of either a load time or waiting for some animation to finish and... It almost feels like a, a huge step back from uh, text adventure stuff like Zork. So, I don't know. I don't know. And man, so far, this has been a vastly inferior experience to 
uh, to Mist, the original Mist. I I have a hard time believing people thought this was such a huge upgrade over Mist. So, oh well, boy. Ideal way to design a website. I remember there was a, um, a PC gamer demo disc in maybe 98 or 99 that the UI for the demo disc literally was a, a point and click adventure like this, uh, a mist style point and click where you had to explore Coconut Monkey Island, I think is what it was. And uh, all the demos were like hidden away in different parts of, of the, the 3D island. It was, it was weird. <laughs> It was weird, but that was that was demo disc back in the day. Um, okay, so there we go. That's tonight's Riven. Um, we'll probably be back tomorrow evening with more uh, more Rivening. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to go through this playthrough without a guide or any sort of hint or anything. I want to beat this myself. I'm not gonna look up anything. I'm probably not even gonna look at my notes between now and then because I don't think it'll actually help. <laughs> I've already I've already poured through my notes enough. I think I just need to figure out the puzzle that's in front of me in the game here and then uh and then hopefully I won't be stuck after whatever whatever this puzzle is hiding concludes, but we'll see. Apparently there's still a whole ass other island I haven't been to yet in Riven, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, if you're going to bed, have a good sleep. Otherwise, have a good day, night, morning, or evening, wherever you are. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.